With terrorists all around us, Republicans are playing politics with the critical funding for the Department of Homeland Security and threatening a shutdown. And it took them exactly a month in power to do that because they didn't like the fact that the president, who is in line with the presidents of both parties, issued an executive order. And by the way, Obama has issued the fewest number in recent history of any president. I never heard one Republican complain when Ronald Reagan uh, did a number of executive orders or George Bush did a number of executive orders, all on immigration. And I have those for the record. But they didn't like this. They'd rather, I guess, deport these dreamers. And one of my colleagues said they're more scared of the dreamers than they are of ISIL. It's a joke. What are they afraid of? Some child that was brought here at three years of age, went to school, is holding down a job, doing great. Those are the people that the president's executive order is affecting. They're, they're in my state, they're in Texas, they're in Arizona, they're all over the country. If there's anyone swept up in that that is not a good citizen, they don't get to have this benefit, which, by the way, does not include citizenship. It just says action on your deportation is deferred. So I would say to anyone within the sound of my voice, if anyone in your family ever came here for another country, think about what they're doing. Think about what they are doing. It will cost billions of dollars to deport these students. And then, by the way, they don't take up an immigration bill. And if, if the status quo prevails, you're talking about deporting 11 million people. You've got to be kidding. We have an independent analysis done by USC, which shows how important it is to resolve this immigration issue. And what a boon it is to our society if we do so. Well, the Republicans are stamping their feet. They never said anything when Ronald Reagan issued an executive order on immigration. They never said anything when George Herbert Walker Bush did it. They never said anything before. But when this president does something that I think is very wise to make sure we keep these young people here, they threaten to shut down the Department of Homeland Security. Now, let's talk about what that means. You would stop command and control activities at Department of Homeland Security headquarters. You disrupt important programs to detect weapons of mass destruction and train local law enforcement. You force critical frontline personnel like Border Patrol agents to work without pay. Now, maybe my colleagues would like to work without pay. Go for it. Most of us need our pay to live. Imagine, just a great idea, have Border Patrol agents and TSA agents who work every day to support their families. They don't get paid. It would jeopardize the safety of my constituency. Because during the last fiscal year, California received over $200 million in crucial grant money that enables state and local authorities to respond to national security threats and prepare for natural disasters. The Republicans are putting this crucial funding in jeopardy. Let's be clear. Even if they back off their threat to shut down the government by shutting down Homeland Security, if they back it off and they say, well, let's just fund it at last year's level, let me tell you, we will not see those safety grants. Last year, Texas, for example, received $105 million from these grants. Now, you can't go home and tell your governor, too bad, we're stepping out. You step up. It doesn't work like this. We are one nation under God. We have to protect our people. Now, I'll tell you what else is threatened. Even if they back down and let the government stay open, but they fund it at last year's level, firefighting grants such as the Assistance to Firefighters Grant Program and the Staffing for Adequate Fire and Emergency Response Grant Program would be delayed. These programs are vital to California. We have a nearly year-round fire season. Last year, California firefighters received $20 million in fire grants that allowed fire departments all over our state to purchase necessary equipment. Now, let me tell you, 
I have been to scenes, fire scenes I will never forget, where we have lost firefighters. They need the equipment that saves their lives. They are so brave. But the wind changes, they find themselves in a canyon, and they don't have the right equipment. Horrific results. We, re we also received $50 million in safer grants last year that allows fire departments to hire and train firefighters because sometimes you're in a situation and if you haven't been trained on how to respond, it puts your life in jeopardy and other lives. Other states, such as Ohio, received a total of $33 million in fire and safer grants last year. I, I just have to say, this kind of threat after what we saw the last time Republicans threatened to shut down, makes no sense at all. We need a clean, a clean Department of Homeland Security funding bill. When I say that, I hope people understand, I don't mean scouring the bill. What I mean is, keep extraneous issues off the bill. We all have our pet peeves. Listen, a lot of people don't like the fact that the Dreamers are staying here. They want to deport them. Introduce a bill to deport the dreamers, bring it to the floor, have at it. I will talk about what it would have been like for me, whose mother was born in Europe, and it took her a while to get her naturalization papers, if she was ripped out of my life. You know, I thought we have family values around here. We need a clean bill. You want to deport all the undocumented people, 11 million who are living in your communities and a lot of times fearful, that's a position you can defend. Defend it. Explain why we should spend billions deporting these people. Put up your solution. Don't try to kill a bill by holding it hostage to your demands. You know, we had an immigration bill that passed here. It was terrific. It was bipartisan. Let's have it again. Let's have the debate. Oh, no. They're in power for 30 days, and they're already threatening uh, a government shutdown of Department of Homeland Security. I'll tell you, this is no way to run the greatest nation in the world. And all I could say in conclusion is this, and I'd ask unanimous consent to place my entire statement in the record. Without objection. Thank you, Mr. President. Let's come together. We had a really good meeting of the minds in a lovely setting last week in a lunch, and we agreed that, you know, these differences are not personal. And it's fine that we have them. I don't mind that that's healthy for the society. We want to have differing views. That's what makes everyone in our country feel represented. The fact that I have views, and Mr. President, you may have a different view, that's all fine. What isn't fine, in my view, is to use your views to hold the Department of Homeland Security funding hostage. Too much is at stake. And I just would say, you know, this chamber is empty. We're not doing a darn thing. Uh, we even got Republicans to come on our side and say, no, this is not the right way to go. So why don't we do this? Why don't we fund the Department of Homeland Security? It went through the entire process and then make an absolute commitment, which Republicans have the ability to do, to take up immigration reform. And then let's debate it. Let's hear why some of my friends on the other side want to deport the dreamers. Let's find out why they don't seem to want to do much about keeping families together. That's fine. Let's debate it. And let's move on. But let's not hold hostage the Department of Homeland Security funding to some ideological debate on immigration, which should stand on its own, have the focus it deserves, and frankly, I hope we're going to begin offering some unanimous consent requests. I won't do it today because I haven't really warned anybody that I want to, but just saying, fulfill the commitment to Department of Homeland Security and then immediately go to immigration reform, where we can hash it out and become the deliberative body that we're supposed to be.